God is a good God. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 107, verse 20 says, He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. Now, those that read that, he didn't have to put an all in there. I added that all. But when you read it, you know all is already included. It means that no matter what you bring to him, whatever destructive situation or whatever seems to destroy, whatever it is destroying, it may be destroying your marriage. It may be destroying your body. It may be destroying your mind or your sleep at night. It may be destroying your finances. You can't even hardly get up and go to work and operate correctly like you need to. God sent his word. And it says, and heal them. That means there is no complete healing. When Jesus spoke to the lepers and everything that was his word. He didn't have to touch them. He spoke and then he told them to go and show themselves. And one of them came back and he pronounced through the word of God that he was made whole. Jesus did not have to touch you for you to be healed. As the Romans officer spoke, the soldier, the officer, he says, you are a man of authority just as I and when I speak and tell my soldiers to go here and go there they obey my commandment at my word and they do it and he says and because you are of that authority I know all you have to do is speak a word and my servant be healed and Jesus looked upon him and said no greater faith than this Oh, what faith it takes just to believe the word before you see it. We are in a show me society. I need to see it before I believe it. But we have to get back to a place that we begin to trust just the word. You know, back in the olden days and our great grandparents and and beyond, all they had to do was give their word. They could go into a grocery store and give their word and, and get groceries because of the trust of their word and what their word meant. We have to get back to a place where our word means something. Well, no matter how far off you and I have gotten and, and how untrustworthy our word may be. I want you to know you can always stand on the word of God. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. And as I said earlier, no matter what it is, it's all encompassed under that. You can trust and believe that his word will bring healing and deliverance to whatever you are dealing with. Exodus, the 23rd chapter, verses 23, excuse me, verses 25 and 26. And I'm going to start in the middle of the 25th verse. It says, and I, we know God is speaking to Moses and Israel, and I will take away from the midst of you. No one shall suffer. He says, I will take away sickness. Oh, I will take sickness, excuse me, away from the midst of you. No one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of of your days, whatever I promised and how long I said you would live, 
You don't have to worry. You don't have to doubt. I'm going to bless you to have a long and fruitful life. You don't have to doubt me at all. God is letting us know that he will take away sickness from the midst of you. He didn't say he was going to take it from the world. But he said in your presence, you won't have to worry about sickness. Even those women, we know for women in those days, the greatest honor was to be able to have a child. And it was almost seen as dishonorable or a curse when a woman could not bear a child. He said, you don't have to worry about having miscarriages or being barren in the land. And I want you to know, not just in the physical sense of a woman bearing a child, but there are some of us impregnated with gifts and impregnated with, with destiny and promises that God has placed inside of you. And we know that over time we have aborted many of our promises and, 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 and many of the blessings that we should have had. But God let us know that in the midst of this situation, you will not be barren or have a miscarriage. Whatever I have impregnated you will, you will carry it out and give birth to it. I declare in the name of Jesus, my brother, my sister, whatever promise is inside of you, you will birth it out in the name of Jesus. Oh, Exodus, and my key verse comes from Exodus, the 15th chapter, verses 20, verse 26, where it says, if you listen carefully to the Lord, your God, and you do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commandments and keep all his decrees, I will not bring you on you any of the diseases that I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. I want you to know, when we look at this nation and this world, we even saw in China where they were rioting because of the, the COVID laws and, 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 and restrictions that have been placed upon the citizens of China. And they were angry that, that they were mandated to do these things and still restricted at such high rates. And, and we see that, that the government has done this because they said that another outbreak was, was apparent and is already moving through certain areas of China. And so they placed these hard restrictions, disease, fear of disease, fear and untrust in our fellow man to, to, to live a clean life to where not only spiritually clean, but physically clean. People don't cover their mouths anymore when they sneeze or cough. People don't wash their hands when they go to the bathroom. Oh, it's become a, a system or a, an alignment with, with the devil in the sense that we don't care about physically being clean. And we know that the physical is always a manifestation of what's going on in the spirit. And we lost our love for being spiritually clean so many years ago. And now, now physically, the manifestation of what's going on in our hearts and in our souls, we now see people go straight to the bathroom, do what they have to do, walk out, and want to touch the food at the buffet aisle. Oh, fear of disease has become so rampant. But again, I just tell you, it's just a manifestation of what's going on in the spirit. But in Exodus, the 15th chapter, God commanded Moses to tell the children of Israel, if you listen carefully to the Lord, your God and do what is right 
in his eyes. So many times we want to do what's right in our own eyes, but if we do what's right in the eyes of the Lord and pay attention to his commandments and keep all of his decrees, God said to Moses that I will not bring unto you any of the diseases that are brought on the Egyptians for I am the Lord who heals you. I want you to get it that just because it's going on in the world doesn't mean that you have you are accountable or you are destined to receive it. The only reason you receive it is because you do not understand that you don't have to receive it. It doesn't belong to you. And even if the weapon should form, oh yes, it will not prosper. Why? Because our God promised us that no weapon that formed against us shall prosper. He let us know that even if they talk about you, they're condemned. When we look at Exodus, the 15th chapter, we have to understand what is going on and why was the 25th and 26th verse so important and why God was talking to the children and what was actually happening in the lives of the Israelites at this time. Well, let's go back and do a little history. We know Israel was in Egypt for 430 years. Now, historians debate that or uh, um, a lot of people who study the word of God, but if you study it correctly, they were in Israel, in Egypt, 430 years from the descendants of Abraham own glory to God until Moses. It does not necessarily tell us how long they were actually enslaved, but it does tell us that a Pharaoh had come along who did not know Joseph and he enslaved them and he 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 put he he increased the toll and the burden upon them. He he increased the workload upon them to where it was unbearable. And we know God, long story short, sent Moses as an Aaron to go and, and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And, and, and when he was saying, let my people go, he was not just saying his people, but he was declaring what thus saith the Lord. These are my people. Do you not know when God looks at you, he considers you and I his people? And whenever the devil has his hands on us or something is problematic in our lives or some demonic force is attacking or sickness or disease or issue is coming against us, do you not know that God is saying, let my people go? But we have to understand that God used the man. Why? Because he said, I have no other hands but yours. I, I, I have no other feet but yours. God uses us as his voice to speak to the unbelievers and those who are the oppressors of the world. God uses you and I to speak his word and he commanded Moses to say, let my people go. And we know plagues and, 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 and all kinds of issues came upon Egypt at that time till finally the death angel came and the children of Israel were able to, to, to leave out of Egypt. But they didn't leave out alone because eventually Pharaoh's heart was hardened and, and, and after that glory to God, he followed and pursued after Israel. Well, we see that Israel made it to the Red Sea. And once they made it to the Red Sea, Moses stuck his staff in the Red Sea. And we know the sea opened and Israel was able to walk across to the other side on dry ground. And as Pharaoh pursued and his army, army pursued that and all the chariots and horses and weapons that came with him, the sea closed up and Pharaoh and his army were destroyed. 
all those that pursued after Egypt was destroyed. Well, this should have been something that should have kept. When you have miracles like that, pillars of fire by day and clouds, I mean, pillars of fire by night and clouds by day. When you see uh, plagues that happen in, in, in uh, your honor to bring you out and curses that fall upon your enemy to bring you out of that bondage. And then you finally see a climatic turn where the sea swallows up all of those that pursue you. You should have had an increased faith. Oh, when you look at your life, look over all the things that God has brought you through. We can take a moment right now. Just close your eyes. Look over this and that, all the things that God brought you through and brought you out of. It should make your faith be so strong that you will never give up on him or never turn your back on him and never, for God's sake, ever doubt him. Israel, unfortunately, was not that strong in faith. They doubted God every time they turned around, even to the point of coming up out of the Red Sea in Exodus, the 15th chapter. It starts off in verse 22. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea and they went out into the wilderness of Shur. Now, what is Shur? What is this specific wilderness that Moses brought the children of Israel out of? We know that Israel was promised that they would go into a land flowing with milk and honey, that they would leave bondage and go into Israel and, 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 and leave Egypt and go into to the, to the promised land of Canaan and that they would receive all of these blessings. But they did not get to that place until they went through the, the, through the wilderness. As soon as they came up out of the Red Sea, they went into the wilderness of Shur. Shur is a region in or around the northern Sinai Peninsula. Although traditionally thought, glory to God, to lie near the southwest border of Canaan, and the northeast border of Egypt, its precise location still remains unknown. When we think about or read about Shur in the Bible, Shur is mentioned six times in the Hebrew Bible. It is actually a setting of a narrative only once. And what that means is though we see it in Genesis 16 and 7, 20 and 1, 25 and 18, Exodus 15 and 22, and 1 Samuel 15 and 7 and 28 and 8. Only when we look at Genesis, I mean, excuse me, Exodus 15 and 22, is it a actual setting or a place? that is actually used as a place that Israel was actually walking in or existing in, or it, 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 it was a place in their life a time that they actually had footing in. The Israelites travel to Shur after they leave, after they left Egypt and having evaded the Egyptian armies through the waters of the Red Sea. When we look at Shur and we think about Shur in the Bible, it is there that they complain to Moses about their thirst. What does that mean? We go on and we see that when we read 22, that they go to the wilderness of Shur and it says, and they were there. They went three days in the wilderness and they found actually no water while they were in Shur. Now, knowing the God that they knew and trusting, 
<coughs> excuse me, in the God, our Lord, God Almighty, who they call Jehovah Jireh, my provider. They should have known and trusted that the same God that brought them this far was the same God that would take them all the way. But you and I do the same thing all the time. The same God that allowed me to get in it, I should trust is the same God that will bring me out of it. It says that when they came tomorrow, they, they could not drink of the water of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore, they named that place Mara. So while in Shur, they came to a place called Mara that had bitter waters. And we know that the people of Israel began to be in thirst and they complained and complained and complained to Moses to bring them. And, and, and actually not to just why would they he bring them there, but they blamed him for it. And that's why the, the valley is called Shur in this instance because it means wilderness or desert and so when we look at sure it's described as a desert place a wilderness place where there is nothing available to quench my thirst or to feast upon i was in a desolate place when i found myself and sure you were in a desolate desperate place when you found yourself in sure I don't know if you were sick in your body I don't know if you were having issues in your family I don't know if you were praying for someone but it felt like a desperate place and you yourself found yourself in sure you were thirsty and you prayed to God to quench your thirst we see that when we look at the noun sure, it is a Hebrew and Aramaic word that can be rendered as a wall. Have you ever gotten to a place where it just seemed like a dead end? The doctor said you had cancer. Maybe there was a lump on your breast and, uh, and he, he pronounced it as malignant. Oh, it felt like your head had just bumped the wall. Maybe uh, you lost a loved one and your heart was broken and it felt like you slammed up against the wall. Maybe your marriage came to a place and both of you have now felt like you've been rammed up against the wall because you seem like there's no answer to fix your situation. But I want you to know that even though sure is the place that you are inhabiting right now and it feels like you have bumped your head against the wall, God is the one who brought you there and God is the one who will bring you out. Alternatively, Sure can also be translated to watch or to travel. It is the wilderness of watchers and it means the wilderness of watchfulness. It is the wilderness for travelers. I say that to encourage you that you don't need to give up. You don't need to give out and you don't need to give in because you are just a pilgrim traveling through and your deliverance is on the other side of shore. You can get healed even in the midst of shore if you would just trust in the God that you claim that you believe in. We see the people came to Mara and uh, they found waters. They thought, have you ever dated someone that you thought they were perfect? But when you got with them, the water seemed bitter. Have you ever been in a situation that you thought was your answer to what you had been praying for, but the waters were bitter? They came to waters, but when they tried the waters, the no waters were no good to drink. There was no healing to be found in the midst of those waters. And the people murmured against Moses saying, what shall we drink? Have you ever murmured? 
and got mad at the man of God who prayed and, and who taught the word and you received the word, but it didn't seem to happen as you had heard in the prayer or you heard in the word and you murmured and you mumbled and you grumbled and you got upset because you didn't get your blessing in the way you expected it to come. The people murmured against Moses. And do you not know that when you murmur, when they murmured against Moses, they also murmured against God because Moses was only going what God told him to go. Moses was only saying what God told him to say. Moses was only doing what God told him to do, but they still murmured against Moses saying, what shall we drink? And it was so much, it was so heavy on Moses' shoulders that he said he cried unto the Lord. And the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statue and an audience, and there he proved them. I want you to know that God has a tree to put in the waters. I need you to look up right now. And look at the tree that is on Calvary. Uh -huh. Look up to the rock. And above the rock there hangs a tree. And hanging on the tree that has been formed in the form of a cross. We see our Savior. And when we look up to our Savior. I promise whatever bitterness you are dealing with. Put Jesus in the midst of it. Look up. To the hills from which cometh your help. All of your help comes from the Lord. You got to look up to the tree. Because on the tree hangs our Savior. But guess what? He didn't stay on the tree for long. It says he hung his head in the locks of his shoulders and said, it is finished. And they put him in a borrowed tomb and he rose again on third day. I want you to know Jesus is from the root of Daniel. He is the only branch on the tree that I need to be connected to. I mean the root of David. And he is the only branch on the tree that I need to be connected to. My Savior is the tree of life. And whatever bitter waters you are drinking, you got to put Jesus in the waters and Jesus will heal the waters. He will turn your bitter waters into sweetness every day with Jesus. When we put Jesus in our day, I put him in the morning when I get up. I put him throughout the day and I put him uh -huh, in the waters as I go to bed. Every day with Jesus gets sweeter and sweeter than the day before. He will turn your bitter waters into sweetness. Verse 26, as I told you earlier, and say, because God told him and that, that, that he would not only heal it, but he says, there he made for them a statue and an ordinance, and there he proved them. Are you going to trust me? Are you going to believe me? Are you going to honor my word? Are you going to drink of these waters even though you tasted them before and they tasted bitter? But now that you put my word in the waters and you did according to as I called you to do, try me again. Try me in the midst of that situation. Let me prove your faith in the midst of the situation. Trust my word and watch what I will do for you. And he said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep all of his statutes. I will put none of the diseases upon you which I have brought on the Egyptians for I am the Lord that healeth me. Not your doctor. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Not your husband. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Not your wife. I am the Lord, the Lord that healeth me. Uh, not your bank account, not your job. Uh -huh. I'm the one, not I'm the provider. You are looking at the provision, but I'm the provider. I am the Lord that healeth thee. And it says they came to Elam 
where there were 12 wells of water and three score and 10 palm trees and they had camped there by the waters. I want to ask you a question. Do you trust him today? We are confident that healing is for everyone. When we read in Exodus 5 and 26, healing is for you and healing is for me. When we understand that Exodus 15 and 26 tells us that God is the Lord who heals us, we have no other choice but to receive that healing. Believe on his word and receive what his word says right now. He is the Lord God that healeth thee. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, Matthew 8 and 17, and 1 Peter 22 and 24 tells us that Jesus on the cross bore all of our sickness and carried all of our pains in order to remove them from us by his stripes. We are and have been healed. We know that Jesus has purchased full healing for each individual as much as he has provided forgiveness for sin. If you can receive that Jesus forgives you for your sins, just as much as you can receive that, you need to receive right now in the name of Jesus that he can heal you according to his word. He delivers according to his word. He forgives according to his word and he heals according to his word. Oh yes, he does. But you have to declare the word of God over your life and believe for healing and restoration. Psalm 103, 2 through 3 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities and who heals all of your diseases. Isaiah 53, 4 through 5 says, Surely he has borne our griefs. Our sicknesses, weaknesses, and distresses, and carried our sorrows and pains. Do you not know that your pains were the pains of punishment that you deserved? He carried them for you. And it goes on and says, and with his stripes. Do you know that he was wounded for you? He was bruised for you. And because of those wounds that shed blood, it says we are healed and made whole. First Peter 2 and 24 says, who himself bore our sins in his own body on a tree that we having died to sins might be might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. Matthew says he took in order to carry away our weaknesses and infirmities and bore away our diseases. Isaiah says for the Lord Oh Lord, by these things men live in Isaiah 38 and 16. And in all these in the life of my spirit, restore me to health and let me live. James 5, 14 through 15 says, If anyone among you is sick, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. And lastly, my son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence for out of, the, of its spring the issues of life. Check your heart. If you're not being healed, check your heart. If you can't receive the healing, check your heart. For out of your heart flows the issues of life. You sometimes got to lay your hands on your heart. 
before you lay your hands on your sickness. Lord, deliver my heart that I may believe your word and walk in your word and choose to do what your word says do because I know according to your word that if you deliver my heart, everything else will follow. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall follow. Are you seeking God first in your heart? If I seek him first in my heart, I know that my healing is on the way. Because he sent his word to heal them and to deliver them from their destructions. It says in Exodus that they came to Elam where there were 12 wells of water and three score and 10 palm trees and they encamped there by the waters. Oh, right, right now, right where you are. You need to sit down and take up camp. Uh-huh. You've been walking through the valley of shore and you've been thirsty and calling on the Lord to heal and to deliver you out of that situation. But God is about to heal you, even in the midst of sure. And in the midst of sure, I believe right now that you're going to receive what God has promised you. And that is your healing. Why? Because he is the Lord God that healeth thee. They came to Elam. Elam means strong trees in Hebrew. See, God, like I told you earlier, is going to turn your situation. The devil meant it for bad, but I want you to know God meant it for good. He's going to take that weakness and make it strong. He's going to take what was sick and he's going to heal it. He's going to take what was in bondage and he's going to deliver it. He's going to take what was weak and turn it into a strong tree. Elam means strong trees. And it says that there were 12 wells of water in Elam, which means 12 means completion, harmony, or balance, or order. God is going to take what was in balance and make it balanced what was out of order and bring order to it. He is the God that healeth thee. Seventy is a number that means strength. It means the strong. One who survives order, reflection, excuse me, perfection, as well as assisting others through spiritual transformation. Once God delivers you, He's going to use you to deliver others. Spiritual transformation. Once he transforms you spiritually, he's going to use you to speak into other li people's lives that they will be spiritually transformed. Once he heals you and heals your situation, he's going to use you to go out and be a healer to others and be a person that helps to heal their situations. He is the Lord God that healeth thee. Right now, somebody is going to receive their healing. And if that person is you, as we pray, I need you to say, Lord, heal me. Right now, because I'm going to pray for all of those that need healing in the name of Jesus. I don't care if it's your body. I don't care if it's your mind. We don't have to know what you need healing from. I don't care if it's your heart. But God knows what you need healing from. Maybe it's a family situation. Maybe it's on your job. But whatever you need healing from, whatever area you need healing in, you need to say, Lord, heal me. And because you're saying that right now, I see you, my sister. 
We're touching and agreeing that before this song is over, God is going to do it. Is it anybody else that needs God to heal them? You may have, I feel pains in the body. You need to say, Lord, heal me right now. Whatever, maybe he needs to fix a situation. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you because once I get into it, have you ever seen, tried to catch a, a, a train or a subway and, 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 and you got to the train and soon as you got on, the doors closed. Once the doors closed to this prayer, it's too late because it's about your faith. And I need some people with faith and to put down their pride that are sick in their bodies or they need God to do something for them right now. I need you to say, Lord, heal me. I see you, my brother. Oh, we declaring it right now. I got some things I need God to heal me from. And I'm saying, Lord, heal me too. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I see you, mother. Oh, yes, right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, we declare that you are bigger than our bitter waters. You are bigger than the valley of shore. You are bigger hi, ya, 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 than this pain. Hi, ya, ya, ya. You are bigger than my scenario. You are bigger than this situation. You are bigger than this doctor's report. And right now, Father God, we put it all in your hands. Because you said in your word that you are the Lord that healeth thee. And just like you spoke it to the children of Israel, we speak it right now that you are going to heal us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we declare it right now that you are bigger than this situation, bigger than this scenario, bigger than this problem, bigger than this occurs, bigger than whatever we're dealing with. You are bigger than it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And we give it to you right now and we declare our healing upon our situations right now, our bodies, our minds, our hearts. We declare healing right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And it's done in Jesus' name. And if you believe that as this song plays, hallelujah, if you believe that as this song plays, then right now in the name of Jesus, I need you to say, God, thank you for my healing. You are bigger than my problem. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I want you to know he's Jehovah Shalom, our God of peace. Uh-huh, he's Jehovah Rophi, our God that healeth thee. Mm -hmm. Hi, 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 hi. He's Jehovah Nisi, our banner in time of war. Eh, hey, hi, hi, hi. He's Jehovah Jireh. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, my provider. Mm, 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 mm. He is our God that healeth thee. Oh, yes. Make it personal. He is my God that healeth me. He is my God that healeth me. In the name of Jesus, he is my God. Yeah, 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 yeah. That healeth thee. The same God that turned their bitter waters into sweetness is the same God that's turning your bitter waters into sweetness. I'm so grateful today for each of you, Lighthouse of Love.
Yeah, 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 yeah. I still feel the power of the Holy Ghost moving. Oh, God is working something out big in somebody's life. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. I feel it right now. It's something big that 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 person didn't think could be fixed, and God is doing it right now. Go, yeah, 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 yeah. Woo, Jesus, have your way, Holy Ghost. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we declare it done. And right now that you have a testimony that you will be able to share to the world of how God healed you and healed your situation. Oh, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I've got a testimony. Yes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lighthouse of Love, for joining us today. And I thank God, most importantly, for healing you and healing me in the name of Jesus. I thank God for our testimony to be able to declare to others so that they can get healed in the name of Jesus. We're not called to be selfish. We got to go out and share it to somebody else and let them know the same God that healed me is the same God that can heal you in the name of Jesus. I can truly say that I've been blessed. I've got a testimony, y'all. If you declare that right now and believe that, why don't you put your hands together? You know how we do. We always leave out of here praising God. Today, we're going to leave out of here declaring that I've been healed and I got a testimony about it in the name of Jesus Christ. What my people that receive that right now in Jesus' name? Put your hands together, Lighthouse. Hallelujah. Let's bless his holy name.